Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Clay Ramage. Today we are going to talk about, I've had multiple requests by the way, um, talking about what I look for in art pieces. Now, I'm not going to talk about high-end art, I'm going to talk about stuff basically under $100. Uh, stuff that you can sell consistently on eBay or other platforms, uh, or even like I sell at an antique store. Uh, you can make good money because typically you can pick them up fairly cheaply at garage sales, thrift stores, wherever, and uh, sell them for anywhere from $25 to $100. So I'm going to walk through a number of pieces that I have that are one or two are listed, but most of them are I'm just enjoying, uh, which is one of my problems because I enjoy it so much I tend to hold on to it rather than list it. But I Here's, I'm going to start with this one. This is this is a print. It's on paper. It is signed. So that's one of the things to look for. It's a pencil signature. So that tells me that, and it's got numbers here. So this is number 247 out of 350. And one of the things I look for is if it's bright colors, vibrant, kind of whimsical, which this is kind of whimsical it's got a primitive feel to it but it's colorful the birds are kind of whimsical look at this bird he's just kind of weird because that it appeals to a certain uh, type of people who are looking for something maybe bright uh, fun and adventuresome for their walls now this particular piece just you know is in terrible condition you can see down here it's got a lot of foxing or spots in the paper from moisture. It's ripped along the edges. It is taped. But the one thing it did have, um, it's got notations on the back. And this is a signed serigraph. So that's the other thing is learn all the different terms of art. Like there's different printing techniques. There's offset lithography. There's stone litho. There's gicle, um, which is a modern technique. There's block printing, wood printing, you know, it, there's all sorts of different things. So, you know, kind of educate yourself on some of that. Um, but yeah, so like I said, and, and again, I paid $2 and I don't think I even paid $2. I think I paid less than that for this because I think it was the last day of the sale and I offered them something less. So, I also look for original art. Now you can tell this is an older painting and it's an amateur that did it. It's not a professional painting. Uh, it is signed, no idea who the artist is, but it's a great subject matter, which is wildlife. Uh, you know, two ducks, a mallard and the hen in the uh, marsh. And part of the way you can t tell of an age is always look on the back. The front's one part of the story, the back's the other story. You can see how dark this wood is. It's oxidized a lot. That means it's been in the air, exposed to the air for a long time. Um, and you can tell, because if you scratch it, it's much lighter underneath the, the surface. This also has wooden keys so that you can adjust the tension on the canvas. So I picked this up at a garage sale for a dollar. And I've hung it on the wall. Oh, the other thing you can look for is if the canvas is tacked as opposed to stapled. If it's stapled, it's newer. If it's tacked, typically it's older. I won't say it's always that way, but those are some keys. You can see from the canvas too, it's very darkened and aged compared to a white canvas. But I have this listed right now for $80, no, $90 on eBay. And I've got several watchers on it, even though it's an amateur, unknown artist. Uh, but it's just got a great feel to it. And it's a good size. So you want to look for kind of this size and smaller. I don't, because the bigger the, the paintings are, the harder it is to ship, the more expensive it is to ship. And people are less likely to buy it because now the cost is going up a lot more. So then I found... <laughs> This one I found at the bins, and I bought it mainly for the frame when I first bought it. I like the picture, it's got a good feel to it, but the frame is huge, massive, and heavy. And you can see the 
painting is very small compared to the frame. And this is actually, it's, this is an imitation of a, it's a modern piece, but it's an imitation of an impressionist style, where it's all about the colors and the feel with the impression of a landscape with mountains and trees and a body of water in there. And, but it was done on this almost burlap fabric, not a typical canvas. And that's part of the reason why it's cracked along the top is because this fabric, as I'll call it, is too loose and it moves. But the more I look at it, the more longer I've had this, the more I like it. So I might just sell it like it is. And it's a heavy one, you know. So something, and my pricing strategy on artwork is if it's like, what did I do it? Oh, <laughs> I get so confused. If it's like this one, I'll go out and I'll look at just antique, because this is antique, it's over 100 years old, I believe. I believe it's more like, you know, 1900 circa. I would say antique original oil painting and just see what comes up. And then I might define it a little more with ducks or wildlife or something like that. If there, I get too many results and it's kind of confusing, kind of narrow it down and see what's out there and what it sells for. And I was finding a lot of these are 75 to hundred dollars. So that's why I picked 90 for this one. And it's a little larger in size than some of them. So that is, yeah. So that's kind of the original artwork um, and you can tell original paintings many times if it's oil or, or acrylic because it's got a texture to it. You know, the impasto, as they call it. It's got some texture to it. Uh, so if you touch it, you'll feel a texture as opposed to being smooth. Or if it's behind glass, oil paintings you do not want to put behind glass. You don't want to trap that moisture. They need to breathe. Watercolors, those can be behind glass, and you'll many times see those behind glass to protect them. But oil paintings, not so much. All right, so I'm gonna move into prints. Now this print I framed, and didn't do that good of a job, but I just wanted to see what it looked like in this frame, and I really liked it. So I picked this, print up at a estate sale for like a dollar or two. I can't remember exactly. But when I the reason I picked it up, it is signed at the bottom by this artist. And he is fairly well known. But it had what's called a certificate of authenticity. So this says, according to the terms of the guarantee, Park West guarantees the authorship of the following work of art. So it's, there's the registration number. Andrew Bone African Mystique, 2015, so it's a modern piece. It's a serolithograph lithograph in color on archival paper, signed in the plate. So this isn't a live, or a, what's called a wet signature. This is part of the printing. They printed the signature when they printed the piece. But it's got the certificate of authenticity, which can add some value. And if you do listings on eBay, it'll say certificate of authenticity, yes or no. So in this case, I can mark yes, because I have it. So that's another thing to look for. It just adds some weight or gravitas to your listing. I guess it is a legitimate print by a legitimate artist. And all right. Then I always say that weird, unusual, uh, rare kind of things you've never seen before, that's kind of what sells. And I saw this at a garage sale last summer it's like, oh, it's a pug, which is cute. But I was like, then I picked it up. It is, it weighs a ton. It's like, what is this? And fortunately, this came with an explanation on the back. It says, framed, the frame is circa 1880s pot belly stove tiles. So a pot belly stove used to sit on these tiles. And they turned it into a um, frame with a pug and it says with best new year wishes circa 1880 pug card so the 
So the greeting card for New Year's and the frame are all circa 1880. And they covered the back. Not only did they put that on there, but they covered it in this antique paper. Oh, which is really cool. And again, I think I paid it one or two dollars for it. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's very unusual. Some of you have seen it. Some of you have even inquired about buying it. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's just a great piece. And it's a hard, it's an easy one to list in the small. It's hard because it's so heavy. You could easily ship it um, on, you know, on the flat rate mail, which I may end up doing. Speaking of unusual, I picked up this print as well. This one is, it's dated 14, so it's a newer 2014. And it, again, the colors are what grabbed me. It's very bright, very vibrant. Uh, this large eye of the bird, this mass here, which kind of is like a moon-sun combo. You know, it's just kind of a, you, you really have to think when you look at this as to what's really going on. So it has some, that quality to it, which is another thing to think about. We shouldn't always buy artwork that we like, but artwork that would appeal to us, to certain people. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then this one, fortunately, on the back, it has the artist's business card, its title, and he signed it here and initialed, which is kind of cool. And this I could sell as is right now for probably $35 to $50, uh, since it's brand new. It's a 13 by 18 and a half. So if you frame it, this would be like a 16 by 20 frame with a small mat, or if you want to do it larger, you could do that. Um, so yeah, there's that one. Then we'll get into a little more modern art. This is a print again. And what's the first thing you think of when you see this? First thing I said was 1970s. It's got that feel to it. The large eyed owl, the coloring. It's all it gives you that feeling of 1970s. So that's why I grabbed it. And then I looked at in the back and it's got a sticker on it. So this was a production piece. Some company produced multiples of these, you know, probably one of the home interior type companies. And it was sold fairly broadly in this frame. So, and if you see there's paper on the back and I know people have talked about People used to stash money behind here, but I can tell you in all of the years that I've been doing this and looking at this, I've never found anything in the back of a painting. Not to say it might not be, but <laughs> I don't think it's as common as people used to tend to believe it is. All right, so that's a more modern print. The other thing I look for is something like this, where it's unusual in the framing. The frame is unusual. The, it, it's obviously old. Sorry, I keep trying to eliminate the glare. And when you look at the back, you, know, you can just tell it's quite old. It's a brass ormolu added to an oval frame, and it is dated right here in the corner. It's dated 1898. That's when this image was created by James Arthur. And he is a very collectible um, photographer that would do these prints in a sepia tone. And I just love the look of this. This actually was given to me by a viewer. And uh, I love this print. So that's another thing to look for, you know, does it look old? Does it look, you know, would it work in a Victorian house or something like that? All right, now we'll switch up to a more modern piece again. This again is a print, limited edition print by this artist, Joan Gray, it's called Sunflower. She actually has a number of prints you can find her out on eBay. So she's pretty prolific and collectible. And, and again, sunflowers are another subject that is collectible. Owls, people collect owl, owls, dogs, cats. You know, that's the other thing to look for is, is, is the subject matter in the picture something that people collect or look for or would decorate with. Sunflowers, definitely. That's why I picked this one up. 
And I've had this one a long time and I'm surprised it's not sold because I'm only asking $25 for it. So I will probably take the listing down and then relist it, um, you know, maybe modify some things. There could be something wrong with my ad that is not popping up when people are searching different things. So we'll see. The other area, um, in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, they did a lot of these hand-colored prints um, of Europe. And so they have this nostalgic feel of, you know, medieval or, you know, 18th century, 19th century European cottages, buildings, uh, those types of um, subject matter. And this one is written up here, copyright 1938. So one of these, there's written in pencil. Usually one is the location, like in this, it's a canal near Nettles. And then this would be the person who did the um, hand coloring, typically, because the print itself is from someone else. And see, and this says made in the USA. A lot of these are made in Europe. Some, you know, some are made in the USA. Again, it was very popular. It does list the company up here, IMO. So you can, you know, if it's got this information on it, it's easy to investigate. Because typically these were produced, mass produced. There were a good number of them out there, but they're still collectible um, and people look for them. Particularly if they have an old house they're restoring and want to decorate. Um, oh, it's in front of me. All right. Then I have, there is a whole bunch of, I'm going to take the little frame on it. I just picked this up in a, uh, in a state sale a couple days ago. This is a, what's called a steel engraving. So they actually, this was a, a, a painting um, by his name, is Bourdon, Paris Bourdon, B-O-R-D-O-N. He was from the 16th century. He lived from 1500 to 1575 or something like that. And he was famous for this uh, painting. And it's, this guy is giving a ring to the bishop. It's basically what's happening. So in the 1800s, this Geyer, well, Geyer actually was 1900s, but they did a the steel litho. So somebody would sit and carve into a steel plate all these lines to make these lithos. Um, and then they named it and all this. And again, this is not in the best of shape. You can see all the foxing and stuff. And there are ways they can take that out and conserve it depending upon the value of the piece. But a lot of these are not that valuable. You know, you'll find a lot of them loose without being framed because people would buy them and just never frame them. In fact, I have a whole binder full of these steel plates of famous um, people from the late 1700s, early 1800s in America. A lot of the presidents, the people that fought in the uh, Revolutionary War, um, and those kind of things. So they were very popular in those days, and they created them. Um, the, I just wanted to, this is another print, and you can tell this from the frame, this is early, 1900s of when this was done. Now what's incredible about this piece is the coloring is still extremely bright and vibrant. What happens over time is the coloring fades and becomes, you'll see it in a lot of prints, they look very bluish. The whole thing, it looks like it's got a bluish tint to it. And particularly if it's like an offset litho, because those inks tend to fade very quickly, the reds and the yellows. So it becomes more blue. The blue starts standing out. But in this case, the color is just fabulous, which means it wasn't exposed to bright light. And uh, it's, it's just fabulous. I just love this print. That's why I still have it, because I haven't sold it. I love the unusual shaped frame. That's another thing to look for. And if uh, it has a convex frame, in other words, it curves out the glass. That's another thing to look for. So those are just some of the basic things I look for when I'm looking for art. And again, none of this artwork did I pay more than two or three dollars for. And I just picked it up 
garage sales, estate sales, Goodwill, the bins. I'm amazed at how much stuff I picked up at the bins. And again, most of this would be one of the higher end. I would sell this closer to $100. Most of these I would mark like these. I start them out at my standard price. I have a standard price of $34.99. Then if I get interest and it sits for a couple months, I send offers of like $29.99. And then if I'm really feeling like I need to clear stuff out, then I'll drop it like $10 and say $24.99. So that's how I move it, and I've had great luck doing that. Um, so, and again, part of it is waiting for the right person to come along who sees that Mickey Mouse golf print that I just picked up and says, oh, that'll make a great gift for my golfer husband or my golfer brother or my Mickey Mouse friend who loves collecting Mickey stuff. So you kind of have to put your mind in, okay, what would I buy if I was looking for artwork. That kind of mentality. But anyway, I hope this video helps. Got questions? Shoot them out in the comments. Catch you next time.